Elephant coloring is something that wasn't always necessary, but due to the recent spike in poaching activity across the African continent, it is now one of the many measures needed to protect elephants. The whole process of, it, of fitting a collar involves darting the elephant um, from a helicopter. A qualified veterinarian administers the drug. When the drug is administered, it takes about 10 minutes for the elephant to go down. And during that time, we fit the tracking device. Also take morphometric measurements of the elephant. And we draw blood samples for DNA analysis, take tailway samples for carbon isotope analysis for short-term dietary change analysis. The whole process takes about a half an hour, after which time the veterinarian will administer an antidote and the elephant responds really quickly to the antidote. So within two or three minutes the elephant will start getting up and then he'll walk away with his or her new tracking device which allows us to um, follow the decisions that they make in their everyday lives. The whole colouring process may be viewed as being invasive but it provides valuable information about elephants. Protecting an animal is a little bit easier when you understand the animal that you are trying to protect. For people working to protect elephants, that collar provides a way of better understanding the elephants they are trying to keep safe from poachers. It provides us with very important data on where they perceive threats um, because their movements change in relation to safety. And sadly, yesterday we heard that we've actually lost an elephant within our study area. So in South Africa, um, Poaching hasn't yet come at full force, although I think this might be the start um, of what West Africa, then Central Africa, and then East Africa has been experiencing up until now. Um, so we're very alarmed by that news. News of elephant poaching in Africa have become a prominent feature of mainstream media over the past couple of years. The elephant death toll has increased steadily over those years and this killing is driven by the demand of ivory from non-African countries. While in Africa, on the supply side of things, the continent's rampant poverty provides a healthy amount of people that are willing to kill elephants for short-term gain. The vicious cycle of poaching is completed by corruption and lack of political will, which ensure that the poached ivory leaves the continent with relative ease while those responsible for the poaching continue their actions without any fear of the law. The situation has worsened to a point where it is now believed that elephants will be extinct by the year 2025 if poaching continues at current rates. Poaching of elephants is taking place at a rapid rate at the moment. We, we're losing an elephant every 15 minutes, so for an hour, so roughly 100 a day in, in Africa. Back in 1979, there were about 1.3 million elephants. Ten years later, 1989, that number had dropped to 600,000. And when President Daniel Arab Moy from Kenya, um, in, in probably, and for those days, 30 years ago, nearly uh, burned six tons of ivory in Kenya, it, it really raised the alarm globally. And for the next 20 years, there was a massive reduction in elephant poaching. The uh, Chinese market then started booming. Back in 2004, there were not many ivory carving factories and uh, not many retail outlets as well. There was like a handful in 2004, but that jumped to 37 carving factories in 2014 in China and over 130 ivory retail outlets as such. So the demand has been driven also because of the wealth in China. China's uh, exponential wealth over the last 20 years is unprecedented. It's even bigger than what you would have seen post the 1920-1930 depression in America. The illegal parallel market that has been created has caused just recently, uh, the elephant census in Tanzania has shown that in five years, 2009 to 2014, Tanzania's elephants have dropped from 109,000 to 43,000. Uh, 25th of July 2015, President Obama um, made a statement on, on, in his visit to Kenya that uh, the American government, who is also, you know, America's the second largest consumer of ivory after China, 
And President Obama made this wonderful statement that America was going to adopt new uh, and, and make changes, further changes to legislation to ban um, most trade in ivory in America across states. Large systematic changes are not only needed from America, but also from China if trade in illegal ivory is to be effectively controlled. The will to keep elephants alive needs to be greater than the demand coming from countries like China, the US and Thailand. On the supply side of things, Africa needs to show pride in its natural wealth. Our leaders need to show political will, just as former Kenyan president Daniel Arab Moi did a couple of decades ago when he destroyed all that ivory. We need to realize that short-term gain from poaching will only cause long-term pains for Africa. We need to ask ourselves, are we happy with just sitting and watching as Africa's identity and livelihood get slowly killed and shipped away to consumer countries? Or will we take a stand against Africa's slow death? Hi, my name is Victoria Baldwin. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm Maddie Alexander from Bakersfield, California. I'm Olivia Goldring and I'm from New York City. I'm Andrea Mendez from Bogota, Colombia. I'm Mira Nivolsi. I'm Palestinian Canadian and we are Youth for African Wildlife. And you are too. Spread the word. Demand change. And be aware of what you will inherit. So help us do more. Donate and check out the links below to learn more at Elephants Alive and Youth for African Wildlife. Thank you.